How do you feel about what's happening over here? Um, I love the spirit of the children and how much they enjoy praising. Uh, so it's refreshing to see and really humbling to see. How did you feel when you walked up and saw these children singing this way? Overwhelmed. Their praise is so fulfilling to me. It makes me want to praise like them. They're so joyful. How did you feel when you walked up and saw the children singing this way for us? I, th I thought it was really nice to see people with different cultures praising God in different ways. But we all have like a common unity as God's children. Mark, how do you feel standing here and listening to these children praising? Um, Any emotion? It's inspirational. Why? To see them memorize all these songs makes me want to memorize some songs. How did you feel when you walked up and saw all the children praising this way? I, I'm always blown away by these kids. Um, they're, they're just so happy and so joyful and their voices are beautiful. They're, it's just amazing to see these kids uh, singing. It's, it's amazing. It's beautiful, really. John, we just wanted to ask you a couple of questions about the mission. Is this your first mission trip? No, this is my second mission. Can you tell us a little bit about your, your first mission trip? Uh, last year we went with uh, His Grace Amba Yusuf to Sudan and uh, it was a different mission. Every mission we learn a lot. Uh, we think we come to serve the people, but the truth is we come and get served from those people. Um, every uh, mission is different. We learn a lot of things. We get uh, in close with a lot of people, and um, it's great. The first mission in Sudan was mainly medical. This is more spiritual. We're trying to teach the people a lot of things and um, learn a lot of things from them as well. Um, and this is... Uh, um, you know, our sister church, and we're trying to unite as a whole um, body in Christ, um, and that's it. If you could share with us one lesson that you've learned from this mission trip, what would it be? I learned that we should thank God for everything that He gave us for granted, and we don't even ask Him for, because when we come to these countries and we see how people uh, go through a lot of things just for the basic stuff, we should be very thankful and grateful for what we have. Thank you. If you could sum up this trip in one word, what would it be for the viewers? I love trip. Thank you. Mary, is this your first mission trip? Um, with the group, yes, from the Coptic Church. Can you tell me how you feel if this is your first Coptic mission trip? Um, what I like about this trip is that there are people from all over the United States, basically the Southern Diocese, um, different ages and walks of life. We have, um, I don't know, the oldest may be 68, the youngest is 15. So, and uh, we're experimenting uh, Ethiopia together and everyone uh, is a, it's like, um, what do you call it, like, take in the view and then give it out. It's nice to see with every, every different walk of life. If you could share with us one lesson that you've learned from this trip, what would it be? Um, not to throw any food. <laughs> Can you elaborate on that, please? Because uh, every time, and it, not here or uh, La La Bella in Addis, every time uh, we take out a sandwich or chocolate, uh, they come next to the bus and they're asking for food, and you can almost see their bones. Like I never see how the, the arm connects with the. Um, so I'm gonna have a hard time throwing any food. What is your name? How do you feel with all of us being here with you? But I'm beautiful, beautiful. Konjo. Yeah. You are Konjo. Yeah. Konjo means beautiful. So they are saying we are beautiful, and we tell you, you are beautiful. Thank you.
Linda, is this your first mission trip with the Coptic Church? Yes, it is. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background? Um, okay, um, I'm actually um, Indian Orthodox, so um, I have heard, uh, I've been to the Coptic Church before. Um, I heard about this mission trip. Uh, this is my first Coptic mission trip, but my second mission trip overall. Um, and it's been amazing. Um, a lot of it, I really enjoyed it. How did it feel being between the Ethiopian Church and the Coptic Church, and also bringing in the Indian Orthodox Church into the experience? It's how does it feel? Okay, um, as far as feeling, I think it feels amazing. Amazing in the sense that uh, when I'm participating in the prayers, I always feel unity. So whenever there's prayers, whether it's in the Coptic language, Arabic, English, or even hearing the Amharic language, I know that we're all praying with the same God. And that sense of unity and that sense of love between the, the people is simply amazing. And it makes us to come back to the roots of what really is important. You know, and hearing these children sing even in Amharic, it's it's pretty amazing because you know they're singing in like in the terms of like love for, for the church and for God, and you could see it right here. Like you could see like they're not afraid to worship, they're not afraid to um to joyfully sing, and it's the same thing. Just like the way you guys are just singing just now, it's right in the background over here. <laughs> if there's one lesson that you could share with people back home, what would it be? very hard. <laughs> um, never be afraid to let God lead you. Um, very funny thing, I think God truly led me. Like I feel like God truly told me to come here to this missions trip. And I've learned a lot. And I also feel as if this is the beginning of many good things to come for me. Um, and so sometimes God allows us to be very uncomfortable. For example, right now we see all the bugs and we're just like, oh, coming from America, we're, we used to, I was actually very afraid of the mosquitoes and the bugs and things like that. But um, being able to, um, getting past that, you know, um, being able to experience this is worth being uncomfortable. And when you're uncomfortable, that's when you realize what's, like going back to what's really important, you know. And what's important is spreading God's message, experiencing God, and being in unity with one another with love. Can't always do that when we're in a first world country and we have our gadgets and everything's of a distraction. Um, that's not always going to happen. So being here, being away from it, being away from Wi-Fi, <laughs> and all those things that we're addicted and um, with and just really living simply or trying to, uh, really helps us to see that you know God really does cover us. God does really protect us um, Despite everything that we could be afraid of that could harm us um, He's always there with us and as long as you allow him to lead you and Despite the fear that we have and all the all the things we're uncomfortable with um, He will truly lead you to some amazing experience and allows us to trust him more than it trusts ourselves yeah. Mark so I'm understanding that you're the youngest person on this trip. How does that feel? Well, I mean, it's mostly a blessing. Actually, sorry. First, can you tell us your age? I'm 15 years old. Okay, now how does it feel? Well, it's amazing experiences. I see people my age every single day struggling to live, and I live at home and very nice life. I mean, my dad's a doctor. I have everything I want. I have everything I need. And just to see these people and help them is probably the greatest thing I've done in my life. If you could sum up this trip in one word, what would that word be? Life changing. Life changing. If you could give any advice to um, people your age back home, or even any age, what would that piece of advice be? Something that you'd want to take back home with you? I will tell them to thank God every day that they live very easily. And even if they have problems, these problems aren't big. I mean, they're living, they're alive, they're breathing, they're eating, and they're sleeping, and it's fine.
Dylan, um, I know you're the leader of this mission trip and I'm under the understanding that you do this every year. So please tell me um, what is the what drives you to do this every year? I feel that this is um, a very special service. Um, I don't consider myself a leader because I think everybody in this group um, co-facilitates. Every group is different. Every group has something to offer. Um, what keeps us going is that it's a learning experience from year to year. We learn from the people here. We learn about their culture. We learn about their circumstances, uh, their spiritual life. We learn from their spiritual life. They give us in many ways uh, that we cannot just learn this from a book. So we have to actually come here. Uh, it helps us uh, to walk in their shoes. And many times they're just happy that we are here and that we chose to be here. So um, the diocese has done um, what's called the mission experience. Um, you know, the time that we're here is usually a little less than two weeks because we travel and the travel time and so forth is Grace Bishop Yusuf also attends with us. Um, and that's an extra special blessing for them because they know that they can go anywhere and yet they come. If you can um, explain to us what, how this mission is set apart from any of the other missions that you've attended. Uh, this mission is very special. Every mission is very special in many ways. This one, you know, we've never been to Ethiopia. Ethiopia is mentioned in many uh, parts of the Bible. They're very spiritual people. They're very ascetic people. Uh, their circumstances are different um, because of the culture, the politics in the country, and so forth. But they are open to, um, to uh, seeing us and to seeing the priest. Anytime that they see any of the priests, they always go up to him they, in, in great reverence. They you know, prostrate, they kiss their hands, and so forth, which means that they really have a devotion and an understanding um, you know, of the clergy. And, um, and this mission being a little bit set apart, um, that, that, they, that they're all special, you know, but we see a lot of their uh, churches and some of the similarities uh, that we share, you know, as uh, churches that are in the same faith and doctrine. If there is one lesson that you could take back home from these 10 days, what would that lesson be? Well, there's so many lessons. Um, I'd say, you know, really it's a lesson in love. You know, you see the children and you feel God's presence. Uh, there's this one convent that we had been to, and the convent has many, many girls. And this is a girls convent. And all day long that we were there, that our group was there, from the minute that we arrived till we were leaving, it was, it was nonstop uh, uh, singing hymns. It, to the point that, you know, when you, when you hear a song and you go and you, you, or you watch it on TV or something, and it kind of stays in your mind. Well, till night time, they're singing their, you know, their hymns were still in my mind. And what came to mind is that these are like the seraphim that praise God all day. Their smile never dims. You know, they have, you know, and whatever that they have, um, they're happy. They're happy to sing. They're happy to share their music. Um, maybe that we don't have many, many things, but it teaches us whatever I have, I'm going to give to God. They have their voices. They have, they have their music. And they may not have some of the material things that we have, but that doesn't really get us anywhere anyways. But their nonstop praising is, is, is some of the highest angels. So maybe that we can learn to give God the best of what we have and, um, and enjoy His presence in our, in, our, in our lives. I invite everybody to come and to share in this uh, beautiful ministry. You're going to find yourself somehow and um, hear God's voice and message. Thank you. Do you have planned yet where you will be going next year for the mission trip? It's kind of, um, you know, being um, laid out right now, but no plans are in action yet. But uh, the, the idea is maybe to head on over to India and to, uh, you know, experience, you know, um, our love and relationship with our brothers and sisters in India in the presence of God. Is this your first mission trip yes, with the Southern Diocese? Yes, it is. <laughs> is this your first mission trip uh, ever? Yes, it is. <laughs> Can you tell us how you feel about the mission trip? Um, I'm learning so much. I've, there are so many things that you can't be exposed to like by not going on these mission trips. And right here, it's, 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 it's a different atmosphere. It's a very good one. And it's very inspiring to watch God work through all of these little kids and it's, it's 
it, it's really for us more than it is for them. That's how I'm feeling right now. I'm getting a lot more out of this than they are. <laughs> if you could sum up this trip in just one word, what would that word be? Inspiring. In what way? Spiritually, personally, in every way possible. If there is one lesson that you could take back to Canada, um, what would that lesson be? Uh, Mira is here actually with us from Canada. Um, it's very humbling. And, well, there are so many lessons. I can't just sum it up into one lesson, but I'm, I'm very humbled by being on this trip right now, and um, I definitely have to do a lot more. Thank you. Irini, is this your first mission trip with us, uh, with the Southern United States? Yes, it is. Is this your first mission trip ever? No, it's not. <laughs> what other trips have you been on in the past? Um, I've been to South Africa and Kenya. What sets this mission trip apart from all the other trips that you've attended? Um, I've, for me personally? For you personally. Um, I think the one thing that I got out of this the most was meeting with the Ethiopian martyrs' families. Um, that was very moving and it made me think about what they went through and like how, what their lives were like and how they grew up and just how much Ethiopia and the church here was an impact to them and their families. Um, and it was, it's been great just spending time with the children and getting to, to hang out with them and play with them and, and show them God's love for, for them and how much he loves us and cares for us. If there was one practical lesson that you could bring back to the church in the United States, um, what would that lesson be? I think the one thing that um, I learned here that was very different from like going to Kenya or even South Africa is the unity of the church. It's been great to see how like the Ethiopian church and the Coptic church are one and that we truly are one in the same and I wish that we could do the same in the States where the Indian Orthodox Church and the Ethiopian churches and all of our churches could pray together as one more often. Very nice. So a practical lesson would be that maybe when we go back home, we can start joining with the other youth of the other churches and hope to become stronger in unity back home as well. Serve together back home as well. Sorry, say that again. And to serve together back home as well. Thank you, Irini. This is my first missions trip, and it's already an eye-opener and a, a great life-changing experience. It really changed me deep, deep inside, and I highly recommend for somebody to come and experience it instead of just seeing it and um, not seeing it for themselves. It's completely different when you know and you don't see. So when you come and actually see and experience everything, it's completely life-changing. Monica, can you share with us um, one life-changing experience that you had or one lesson that you feel like really impacted you on this trip? Yes, we went to um, an all-girl orphanage and um, I donated, actually I had a lot of hair bands, hair clips, um, ponytail holders, everything, and we were actually passing it out to all the, the little girls and as soon as I saw them all actually putting it on their hair, their heads, it really, I felt like my heart was just touched, my soul, it was just something unexplainable and um, it's definitely something I recommend, I want everybody to experience it. Thank you. Um, if you could sum up this trip in just one word, what would that word be? Uh, that's a tough one. One word. I'm trying to think of a, a big word, but it doesn't need to be a big word. Yeah, but I just, the right one to touch of it. But I'm just going to say, hmm. Or I'll change up the question. If you could um, explain the people of Ethiopia in one word, what would that word be? Oh, loving. They're so loving and welcoming too as well. I just, if I could find one word to put both of those together, that would be it. Welcoming and loving. And also if there was one lesson that you could take back home um, in order to practice what you learned here, what would that be? Mm. Humble. Become humble. In what way? How can I become humble back in the States? Mm. I, you kind of got me there. <laughs> yeah, I know, but... um. Becoming humble, in what way? Do something out of the ordinary, out of your normal schedule. <laughs> See things and view things differently.
This is Marie here, jump roping. Um, she's from Tampa, Florida. <laughs> okay, Marie, we'll let you catch your breath. <laughs> um, so I understand this is your first mission trip with us, is that correct? Yes. That's true. Um, what other mission trips have you been on previously? I went on with uh, I went to Peru um, on a medical mission trip uh, with my school ones, and um, that was purely medical. So this is a completely new experience for me. Okay, what has made this trip different from your other ones? I I just the oh sorry catching my breath. <laughs> um, working in a clinical setting isn't as personal as this has been. So you get to really interact with the kids and spend an entire day with them, which makes a huge difference. Like when I saw patients, it was in and out. Um, <laughs> so spending the time, thank you. <laughs> spending the time with the kids and really developing a relationship has been absolutely amazing. And they've honestly taught me more than what I brought to them. So it's been a really good experience. If you could sum up this trip in just one word, what would that word be? Um, inspiring. Cliché, but it's true. Um, I feel like I'm going to be able to bring back a lot and hopefully maintain the mindset that I've had this entire 10 or 12 days. Thank you. Actually helped set up the next question. Um, if there is one thing that you could bring back, um, back home to the States, what would that be that you could continue practicing? Um, just the mindset that I've had this entire time. One of humility one of prayer it's 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 nice to detach myself from everything back home you know you get so caught up with school work and even when you're not in school and work you find distractions so being here being detached and and aware of your surroundings that's what i'd like to bring back kind of detach myself from the technology from the distractions and have this mindset of humility and that's what i see in a lot of these people and simplicity as well so. Thank you, Marie. I'm happy you're with us on the trip. Tantaida, I understand you've been on a mission trip every single year with the with the SUS. No? Oh, okay, well, please tell us. What is your history with the mission trips no, to the southern United States? I went to, Sayedna, uh, to South Africa, and I went to South Bolivia. And one more year, I went to Mexico. And this year we are here in Ethiopia. Um, how does, uh, what sets Ethiopia apart from the other mission trips that you've attended? Uh, we saw so much of spirituality in everybody, in ladies, in men, in everybody. And it's just uh, amazing how they are really close to God and how close to the church and how they really believe and their action is really amazing. And we feel that we are so little comparing to what they are doing and really, really they believe in, in God in the way we wanted everybody to be. Did you know this much about the Ethiopian church before coming? Actually no, I didn't have even a chance to read about it but it, I was surprised and I was happy. What's one thing that you learned about the Ethiopian church that most touched you? That we don't know how much the, a lot of people in the world are close to God than we really know but we saw it in our own eyes and we understand that. Is there one lesson that you can bring back to the United States or to the viewers that are watching? We would always think that we are the one who spent many hours and hours in the church and hours in fasting. We discover we are not really doing that much compared to others when they are happy to do it. They, do it, they are doing that with happiness. So, Thank you, Tantaida. That's beautiful. So Amanda, you have just completed um, sharing a beautiful Sunday school lesson with these kids. Tell me how you felt while doing that. It was fun. I wish there wasn't such a language barrier so you can share more and you could know that they understand you. But it is nice to see their smiles on their face and to know that God loves them. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what you shared and why you shared it? I shared that Jesus loves the little children, the story about how the children ran to Jesus and the disciples told them no. And we wanted to get across that Jesus loves them no matter what because uh, the culture here tells them, teaches them to be afraid and focuses more on 
God's mercy or justice and we want them to also remember his mercy and love. If there was a lesson that you could bring back home to the United States, what would that lesson be? More respect. I think maybe we forget that we have to fear God as well and to see that is uh, inspiring. Uh, you need both. It needs to be a, a good balance, not too extreme one way. That's beautiful. Um, if you had the chance to attend um, another mission trip with the Southern United States, would you be willing to do so? Yeah. Uh, what's one thing that you would hope to see in another mission trip? Uh, maybe more focus on one service so you could get to know them more and they can get to know you better and so that they can trust you more and maybe get more of a message of a cross. When you focus on maybe too many people, it's easy for them to get lost and to you want to make sure you see everyone. Um, what's one thing that you can practice when you go back home that you learned from this mission trip? <laughs> it would be to go to God first in the morning, not just at night, because you need Him throughout the day. It's beautiful. Thank you. Elizabeth, after being in Waliso for almost a whole day and in Ethiopia for almost 10 days, um, tell me how you feel. I am overwhelmed by this joy. I'm overwhelmed by their love for God and the respect that they have for the, the Ethiopian church has for the church. Um, I'm really hoping that the time that we spent with the Ethiopian Orthodox children, uh, they understand that God really loves them, that, the, that we came here to tell them that God loves them, Jesus loves them. What's a lesson that you feel like the people and the children of Ethiopia have um, given you personally? Joy and respect. There's something that I can always take back with me, that, um, that I can res always respect the church more, I can always respect the house of God more. Um, and that there's beauty in every single little thing that God has given us. And joy doesn't come from things. Joy comes from being with each other and praising God. Praising God is a huge thing that I've, I've seen in every single person here. Thank you, Elizabeth. Marina, um, I understand this is your first mission mm -hmm. trip. Um, tell me how you feel. Like, what did what did you think of it? Um, it's actually really, really. It's very, very nice. I didn't think it would be anything like this. Um, it really opened my eyes in so many ways. I got exposed to so many things, and this isn't going to be my last mission trip. I want to come back. So that's that's it. If there is one thing that you that really surprised you on this mission trip, um, what was that? Um, the attention the kids need and crave. That's what it is. What's, is there anything that you think um, you can take back home to teach others who didn't get to attend or to share with others who didn't get to attend this trip? Um, just being exposed to everything, like the way you look at things over there is completely different than here. Just, I wish they can see everything how I see in my eyes. So it's just, yeah, that's, that's about it. Thank you, Marina. I hope that you can, when you go back, that you're able to share and allow others to come as well to I the will. next trip. I'm going to encourage all of them. Thank you. This is Sylvia from Nashville, Tennessee. Um, Sylvia, I understand this is your very first mission trip, is this correct? Yes, correct, that's correct. Okay, can you please tell me how you felt? Um, was it what you expected? Let me know how you felt during this trip. Um, well, um, my expectations weren't um, all that when I first came, but uh, God completely, um, uh, like over, like oh, went completely over, above and beyond all my expectations uh, for this trip. Um, and I think um, uh, my goal was to step outside my comfort zone here. And when I did that, God, uh, allowed, like He exposed Himself and He allowed me to see Him, experience Him in ways that I would never have imagined. So, do you feel like you can experience Him the same way back home as you did here? Um, Yes, I do. Um, I think um, 
I think we have uh, the wrong concept. We think we have to go around the world and serve all these people in order to be good servants or to, uh, uh, to make God happy or to see Him or be close to Him. But um, at home, we can definitely do the same thing. It, service is not um, a, a thing you do, it's a way of life. So if you apply that, you'll, you'll have God with you all the time. So. All right, so can you tell us please how have you felt during this mission trip? I understand you went on other mission trips before, is this correct? Yes, yes, I did went to a, uh, last year to Sudan, but this mission is a lot of joy, a lot of happiness. I'm so excited and, uh, you know, I can see the, the kids are so happy uh, and that's it. Um, what do you feel is one thing that has really touched you in this mission trip that sets apart from the other mission trips you've attended? These kids, these kids appreciate us a lot. Every time they thank us, Anasaginalo, uh, which is thank you in uh, Habashi or Ethiopian, or actually uh, in their own language, uh, they love us. They hold hands. Um, they're so attached to us. Um, as you can see, they want to just be next to you, near you all the time. So it's, it's very good. We can see, I, I can confidently say, we see Jesus in every face. Um, what brings you back every year to these mission trips? Um, exploring more and more. And actually, as I said, um, I'm the one who gets served. I'm the one who... ...about Jesus through these kids. I learn stuff, and it's, it is great. And it's great. If there's one lesson, John, that you can take back, um, take back home to Florida, what would that lesson be? I thank you, God, for everything you have given me. Thank you. Thank you, John. Monica, do you mind if I ask you a couple questions? Jesus, not at all. Okay, okay. So, so far on this missions trip, what what do you think um, stood out the most to you? Here, Nathan. Um, what stood out most to me, um, I think touched me most is that um, the people of Ethiopia brought a lot for, for us to learn from them. I think we came thinking that we would bring them closer to the church, but in fact, um, they're the convicted us and made us realize that we don't take enough advantage of our church. Um, and that's something that I see in all of them. Uh, you know, every time I see the kids passing by the church, they do the sign of the cross. Every time they enter, they kiss the doors. Um, so it's something that's very touching to me. And I've realized that my mother, my church is, is my mother and she has so much love to give me. And it's up to me to accept that love. Okay. So you feel like you've learned from them more than anything? Certainly, and I think that's how it is in every mission trip, is that there's always, um, Christ is always in every single one of, of the kids, or in every single one of the adults, every single one of the priests that we meet, there's always a message. What message do you think um, that you would take back to America? That I can take back? Um, it would be um, what I was just sharing with you, is that um, to really hold on tight to our church, to be loyal to it, to be faithful to her, um, to realize that she's here to bring us our church, our mother church is here to bring us to heaven. So to grab onto her and, and to follow her direction and obey all the, all the things that, that she's done all of these years to bring our forefathers and to bring all of these saints to heaven, that she'll bring us as well if we just cling on to her as these people do. Do you feel like you, what is the one great impact do you, that you feel that you've done to the Ethiopian children? Um, that's not something that I think would be visible to my eyes. Um, it's something that I can pray for, that I can pray that, um, that I've actually, uh, dropped seeds or allowed Christ to work through me. Um, but it's hard to say that right now that I, I, that I can see it, but I pray that 
that whatever we've done here, each one of us, that it's touched lives or that it's um, planted seeds. Do you feel accomplished here in Ethiopia with your service? Do you um, it's, I think that's a difficult question to ask. I believe that um, wherever God has placed us, um, that it is for a reason. And so I feel that me coming here um, has been beneficial for my spiritual life and for myself. And if the mission begins within me, then and I and I focus on it within myself, then then that's a um, a beginning of a new chapter between me and Christ. Um, but for me to say that it's been a, that I've accomplished something in others, it's hard for me to to measure that because it's not for me to do. Would you come back here to Ethiopia? Certainly, yeah. It's a beautiful country, beautiful people. Um, they've touched me in many ways. One thing that has touched me the most. Um, again, is, is their love for the church. Uh, that really, really impacted me. Um, and I think that that was the message that, um, that God wanted me to get from the Ethiopian people, is um, to hold on to my church and to take advantage of communion, to take advantage of his love, um, but to also learn from them the fear of God. So I think um, the Ethiopian church is great fear for our Lord and, the, and our church back home in America um, believes in his great love and in his great grace. To combine both of them, I think this brings us back to the roots of the Orthodox faith. Um, and so that's really what's impacted me, that I pray that I can join both together, that I can join the, the love that gives me, to remember that always, and to always ask uh, to bring back the, the fear of, like to have the fear of God and to have the love for the church and join those sides together. Thank you, Monica Kalini. Thank you, Monica.